Hello, everyone. Um, I want to do a quick summary of an article uh, recently published by the National Apartment Association, and I want to give them credit. And the author is Sam Gilboard. It was revised August 16th, 2022, so that's the dating on it. And it's, a, it's an open discussion of uh, what happened at the White House re a few months ago because there was an eviction prevention focus um, and White House summit, the White House United States presidency, right? So this is an article that talks about what happened at that uh, summit and some of the solutions that are being discussed. But it starts out most importantly with the notation that out of all the panelists that were invited, there was no one from the housing industry. So that's just incredible that we've got an eviction uh, summit at the White House sponsored with various types of legislative uh, policy makers, courts, judicial system, other advocacy, advocacy groups, but no one present from the housing industry. And it's stunning, of course, to see that that is what took place, but it's important to see the response from the NAA, what they're doing, what they're pushing. And I'm gonna go into a second video uh, on that in a little bit more detail because uh, due to the fact that the, that the housing providers were locked out of this summit, they tried to put their policy initiatives and their thoughts in front of the president by writing a letter and you know saying you know we're glad that you did this but um, you know here's some other things to be considering we'd like to be part of the solution uh, the housing solution in our country and the eviction uh, solution in this country so they started out noting uh, mr gilboard noting that housing providers weren't invited and then he went through some of the things that did happen and some judicial opinions and courts around the country that are having um, processes like we have in Indiana to force mediation and settlement conferences and whatnot in order to get some communication going between landlords and, and the housing providers and tenants, their residents, to see if they can solve some of these problems. And those are very promising on the one hand, although it's hard to know whether the resident, the tenant, is actually getting caught up on their rent or not or if we're just delaying the inevitable, which is what I see in the eviction courts, you know, mostly it's, it's delaying the inevitable. And it's nice that there's some um, legal counsel, I'm always in favor of legal counsel getting involved, and there's a lot of programs of pro bono or low bono provided uh, uh, legal counsel to residents to help them understand their rights, which is very helpful. It also helps negotiate settlements. Um, but you still got to have money, right? Because the vast majority of evictions are because of a failure to pay, right? So uh, the, the article by Mr. Gilboard talks really about a couple things. Number one, he does address the supply problem, which is really the biggest overarching problem. And we're going to get into that more in the next video, the housing supply problem and the reasons for it and how to address it and what needs to be done. So supply is, is a big driver here. Uh, the other thing is that there's definitely a push on the national level by the NAA, at least in this article, and their sister organization, um, the National Multifamily, what is it, National Multifamily Housing Council. Those are two sister organizations dealing with um, multifamily uh, residential uh, development all over the country. And that is that there's a desire for more subsidies for the renters, <clears throat> for the tenants. Because clearly what happened during COVID is that there were eviction moratorium all over the country and the people who bore the burden of that were the housing providers. And Mr. Gilboard is eloquent about that, indicating, hey, we, we kept our housing, uh, our communities housed, healthy and safe throughout the pandemic. 
we're the ones that shouldered the lost revenue, deferred maintenance, and burdens from the moratorium. So the housing providers gave the housing, uh, but bore the cost of it. And so they're saying, look, what money is going to be available on the federal level to subsidize us when there are eviction issues? And what are the issues being faced by the tenants? And we have, um, think of this as income bans, right? So affordable housing means lowest, the lowest income band for like Section 8. And this is fully subsidized or almost fully subsidized, but you have to be in this low income band. There's a lot of people during the pandemic that came out that are like, hey, we're not in this low income band. We're a, a, a above it, one or two bands above that, so to speak. And we're not getting enough, we're not getting any money. So if you were a landlord, you're providing housing, you maybe went to Indy Rents and you helped try to get your tenants qualified and you found out they couldn't qualify because they made too much money. So they, there were, their income band was too high in order to get the money that was allocated for rental assistance. Now certainly lots of money has been allocated, lots of money has been distributed, lots of housing providers have gotten uh, reimbursed ultimately, uh, oftentimes a year later, you know, carrying a tenant for a year or more, uh, and then finally getting reimbursed if they did qualify. So the NAA is saying, look, we, we want to expand the bands of rental assistance that are available, look at the money that's been appropriated already, and expand who it could go to, because it's often a very small amount of income loss that creates a problem for the tenant being unable to make their rent. And if we can, we can subsidize that, um, that's what they're trying for. So this is an expansion of, think of it as expansion of Section 8. That's what is the tone of the conversation from the NAA and the National Multifamily Housing Council. Um, I'm not giving, uh, I, I, I don't know where you stand on that, if you like more subsidies or less or whatever, but it is a in tandem solution or possible solution along with the housing supply problem, which we're gonna talk about next in our next video, which again is I'm gonna summarize some things from um, the NAA and the National Multifamily Housing Council, what they're, what they're proposing and what works and what doesn't work. And I think you'll find that very interesting to see what's being uh, presented at the highest levels of the federal government. So important, uh, important facts coming out uh, from the NAA, they're a strong advocate, obviously, for housing. They develop a lot of housing all over the country, and it's, it's very interesting, and it trickles down to the smallest landlord with one, if you got one rental unit, right? It's the same issues that are being advocated on the national level, and we're part of that. Um, Tim Hawkins of our office does that on a national level as well as on the state level. So we're, we're excited to be part of that conversation and help you understand what's happening and the way that that conversation is developing um, across the state and across the country. We'd love to hear more from you, so keep us posted. Thank you.